Some sources state that the infamous Ravenite Social Club, once a haunt of mobsters such as Neil Della Croce and John Gotti, started off life as the Alto Knights Social Club until it was renamed by Carlo Gambino. This is a myth, and in fact, the Alto Knights and the Ravenite were two entirely separate mafia hangouts. Let's check it out. Welcome to OC Shorts, bringing you detailed historical snapshots of the American Mafia and other organised crime. Feel free to subscribe if you like that sort of thing. Today we're going to take a look at the myth around the history of the infamous Ravenite Social Club on Mulberry Street. The traditional narrative regarding the history of the Ravenite Social Club, a place that would become synonymous with the swaggering John Gotti, was that it started off life as the Manhattan outpost for then Brooklyn-based gangster Albert Anastasia. The club being frequented by the likes of his good friend, Charlie Luciano. After the fearsome Albert Anastasia was assassinated in October 1957, the club was allegedly taken over by Carlo Gambino, who reigned it the Raven Knight Social Club after his favourite Edgar Allan Poe poem, The Raven. At some point, Gambino felt that the venue was attracting too much heat from the authorities and it passed over to Neil Della Croce. And then after Neil Della Croce had died, it became a favourite hangout for John Gotti after he descended to the position of boss following the murder of Paul Castellano. However, much of this is inaccurate. Historical evidence can support the fact that the Alto Knight Social Club was actually a long-time Genovese hangout situated a couple of blocks south of the Gambino-run Ravenite. It being well documented that the Ravenite Social Club was based at 247 Mulberry Street. Interestingly, a daily news article on Genovese powerhouse Jerry Catina on the 18th of December 1969 states that the location of the Alto Knight Social Club was at Kenmare and Mulberry Street. The article states that the Alto Knight Social Club was a venue that Jerry Catina liked to drop into. It says... He has a wife and spends a good deal of time at home. He rarely, if ever, goes to a night spot. For years, he would drop into a cosy little hole in the wall called the Alto Night Social Club at Kenmare and Mulberry Streets in New York's Little Italy. The clubhouse was equipped with a few marble top tables, a large coffee urn to brew espresso and a curtain that hung halfway up across the front window. This, for years, was the meeting place of some of the metropolitan area's leading gangsters. It was there that many hits were discussed and contracted for. On occasion, even kangaroo trials were conducted in it. Always, two hard-looking young men were posted as lookouts at the window curtain. On the wall was a phone which had been doctored by mob technicians, making the attachment of wires by police extremely difficult. However, the cops finally solved the problem by soldering their wires to hidden parts of the phone, making a nice connection for a tap. But the tap was discovered and the social club stopped socialising, and now it's a legitimate dry cleaning establishment. As can be seen on this map of Little Italy, the location of the Alto Knight Social Club is actually two blocks south of the 247 Mulberry Street address of the Ravenite. In another Daily News article dated the 1st of September 1956, regarding the fallout after the vicious acid attack on journalist Victor Rizal, masterminded by Lucchese racketeer Johnny Dio. We see that the man who performed the attack was then found dead a block from the Ravenite Social Club. If Carlo Gambino had indeed changed the name to the Ravenite after the killing of Albert Anastasia in 1957, then why is it listed in this news article as the Ravenite in 1956, the year before? The first three victims of the crackdown were grabbed Thursday night outside the Ravenite Social Club, 247 Mulberry Street, about a block from where Telvi was found slain. Other sources often state that powerful Genovese captain Peter DeFeo, known as the Mayor of Little Italy, would often frequent the Alto Night Social Club and use it as a base for his operations. Again, supporting the fact that the Alto Knights was in fact a Genovese Social Club. So, where did the myth arise from that the Ravenite and the Alto Knight Social Club were one in the same? It may well have come from an article by journalist Ben Kudasik and Anthony Skadutu on 2nd of January 1986. It says, 
About 1931, Luciano became boss of the family and named it the Alto Knights. I don't know why. When Luciano was deported, Frank Costello and then Vito Genovese took over, but the name stuck. After Carlo Gambino became the most powerful boss in the country, he changed the name, because he always hated taking a backseat to Charlie Lucky and the others. He called the place Ravenite, supposedly after his favourite poem, The Raven, by Poe. The name has stuck for now. From here, perhaps, it seems that this fallacy has become gospel. But to clarify, the Genovese-run Alto Knight Social Club was a completely separate venue from the Ravenite, although mobsters from all the families frequented both. On a side note, neither Neil Della Croce or John Gotti were ever actually the owners of the Ravenite. The whole building was in fact owned by Gambino soldier Joe the Cat Lafort, as covered in one of my previous videos. Just a quick one today. I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching.